Hi, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News. Today, the 5th of April. And if you've been following the news out of the Middle East at all, you know that there is uh, upheaval in Egypt with the Muslim Brotherhood. They are attempting to field a presidential candidate and uh, shoo him into office as Egypt's new president. We'll talk about him in a moment. Uh, in the meantime, the Muslim Brotherhood is creating uh, turmoil and rioting in the street in Egypt, even at this time. Uh, I have here a BBC News uh, bulletin from today. Uh, rocket fired from Egypt hits Israeli city of Eilat. Now this is something new. Eilat is down uh, at the southernmost tip of uh, Israeli territory. It's considered a seacoast town. It's considered a tourist town. And it's above all considered to be safe. Uh, and has been for the last 30 years under Hosni Mubarak. He has left uh, the Islamic Brotherhood in Egypt is more or less controlling things. And now we discover that they're beginning to shoot rockets into the southern part of Israeli territory. Uh, District Police Chief Ron Gertner told Israeli radio that the rocket had been fired from Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. And uh, he said it struck a construction site close to a residential area shortly after midnight. This would be uh, midnight uh, of the day that I'm uh, making this update. The blast took place as thousands of people congregated in the resort town for the Jewish holiday of Passover. And many, many Israelis do go to Eilat for Passover. So uh, this was a carefully timed rocket. Uh, we had a, uh, another news bulletin from the Jerusalem Post, which is headlined, Prime Minister on a Lot Rocket, quote, we can never stop fighting terror. Speaking at a ceremony marking 40 years since the hijacking of the Sabina airliner, Netanyahu vowed to strike back at those attacking Israel, saying that the Sinai has become a terror zone. Uh, one Egyptian the official objected, saying uh, there's no evidence that that rocket was fired from the Sinai, but to where else could it have been fired from? If you look at a map of the region, <clears throat> it has to have come uh, from the west and therefore from the uh, Sinai. Uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu uh, Thursday vowed to strike at those who attack Israel and said the Jewish state can never stop fighting terrorism. Uh, Speaking at a ceremony, as I said, marking 40 years since the uh, operation to free hostages on a hijacked Sabina uh, airliner, Flight 571. And by the way, uh, at that time, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu was a young commando in the IDF, and he was wounded during uh, the rescue. And he said, Israel must always fight terrorism. It will not stop if we do not fight it. Sinai, uh, he very carefully said more than once in his speech, has become a terror terrorism zone. This Grad rocket, by the way, is uh, not one of the, the primitive rockets, but is a, a more highly developed rocket with a better guidance system and greater range, and definitely coming from Egypt. The Muslim Brotherhood uh, I'm convinced is behind this, and uh, most of the editorial pieces that I have read uh, to date suggest that the Muslim Brotherhood is launching a terrorism campaign against Israel. Even at the very same time, uh, they are trying to nominate their candidate for president of Egypt. His name is Kairat al Shatter. Uh, he's a prof professor of engineering, he's a business tycoon in Egypt, and this of course, is the first presidential election uh, since Mubarak was elected 30-plus years ago, and uh, the popular uprising in Egypt has, has come to this point. White House officials held talks yesterday with representatives of the Muslim Brotherhood in Washington. Mind you, this is the, at the very same time as uh, other parts of the Muslim Brotherhood back in Egypt were firing a rocket at a lot. <clears throat> uh, the Islamist group has thrown itself into the fray uh, in uh, Israel, in Egypt's presidential election, and there is 
uh, good reason to believe that their candidate will win. Uh, the meeting, uh, which began on Tuesday and, and continued on, uh, was with low-level national security staff and uh, part of a series of U.S. efforts to broaden uh, engagement with a new and emerging power party in Egypt following the revolution last year. The White House pointed out that, the Republican, that Republican Senators Lindsey Graham and John McCain and several, several other U.S. lawmakers and officials had also met with Brotherhood representatives in Egypt and elsewhere in recent months. Quote, we believe that it is in the interest of the United States to engage with all parties that are uh, committed to democratic principles, especially nonviolence. Uh, and another quote, in all our conversations with these groups, we emphasize the importance of respect for minority rights, the full inclusion of women, and our regional security concerns. So we have here the uh, Muslim Brotherhood of Egypt rising to unprecedented power on the global scene, even having representatives uh, with, uh, in Washington, D.C., uh, uh, amidst talks of various sorts with various officials, including uh, congressional representatives. You know, Egypt is warring internally. We have watched this for the last year. <clears throat> and it's kind of fascinating that there's a latter-day prophecy concerning Egypt. Uh, at, at least in the opinion of many, it's a Latter-day prophecy. Uh, it's Isaiah 19, verse 2, And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against his brother and every one against his neighbor, city against city and kingdom against kingdom. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof. And they shall seek to the idols, to the charmers, to them that have familiar spirits, and to wizards. And I will give the Egyptians over into the hand of a cruel lord, and a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. And whether you believe that this is a Latter-day prophecy, or as some have said, a Pharaonic uh, prophecy, Pharaonic era prophecy, it still spells out the, the biblical doom of Egypt. And it, you can see a reiteration of this prophecy over in Ezekiel 29, starting in verse 9, And the land of Egypt shall be desolate and waste, and they shall know that I am the Lord, because he hath said the river is mine, and I have made it. Behold, therefore, I am against thee and against thy rivers, and I will make the land of Egypt utterly waste and desolate from the tower of Syene even to the border of Ethiopia. And so whatever happens in Egypt at the moment, uh, apparently there will be a lot of infighting. Uh, uh, war will break out of some sort, and uh, in the end, Egypt will be destroyed. In fact, there's a prophecy here which has never been fulfilled concerning Egypt, and it's in verse 11 of Ezekiel 29. No foot of man shall pass through it, nor foot of beast shall pass through it, neither shall it be inhabited forty years. So there will be such desolation in Egypt that no foot of man will set foot there for, for a forty-year period. Now, we've uh, talked about this in the past, suggesting that, uh, in our opinion, the only thing that could possibly create that kind of a condition would be nuclear warfare, leaving behind radioactive waste, possibly chemical warfare, but usually chemical warfare or biological warfare will clear out before a 40-year period has passed. Uh, so this certainly looks like the remnants of some sort of nuclear war. And it all begins as given in Isaiah, I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against his brother. In other words, there's going to be an internal battle in Egypt that will rise to significant proportions. And perhaps we're seeing the beginning of that right now. Thought you might be interested in this little news item today. 
rockets being fired out of Egypt into a lot. Stay tuned. Uh, we're going to be watching as tensions rise in the Middle East. Why? Uh, because Israel is God's timepiece and the tension is mounting there. Gary Stearman, keep looking up.